the bonus chapter, Handyman Bob is going to show you how to significantly reduce your energy consumption and make your home and automobile more efficient. Energy experts know that 30 to 40 percent of all energy is wasted before you even get to use it, and most of that's in your own house. So you should do these things before you put up your first solar panel, because saving this energy is the same as generating it, and using photovoltaics to generate energy costs 90 percent more than doing these steps. So let's get started. Insulate your attic. This is the multi-tester that I showed you earlier. It has a built-in infrared thermometer, but you can get a handheld standalone infrared thermometer for less than $50 on eBay. Great tool for improving the efficiency of your house. Just point it at a surface like the ceiling and you get a reading. Now what you need to do is check the exterior walls versus the ceiling. If the ceiling is the same temperature or colder than the exterior walls, you don't have enough insulation up there. It should be warmer in temperature than the exterior wall, which is about this thick normally. If you don't have insulation overflowing over the rafters up there, completely covering the rafters, you probably don't have enough insulation. Now blow-in cellulose is the technology used right now. It comes with a nice blower. If you get a certain amount of bags from your home improvements place, you just slit the bags and dump the cellulose right in. It's recycled newspaper that has a flame retardant on it. And your friend is upstairs with a hose blowing out the cellulose, covering those rafters up. It takes two guys about two hours to do this. Now, two things you need to know. Check with your local contractor first, because when you add up the cost of you buying this stuff at retail, just tell the guy, I'm going to be insulating my attic. What price can you give me? I've got a 2,000 square foot home and I'd like about 10 inches of insulation. They get this stuff wholesale and their cost to blow it in may be the same or less than you going and buying it retail and getting the blower and doing it all yourself. The other big bonus on this, other than you're going to save a lot of money, is that the house gets significantly quieter from incoming road noise and airplane noise. It's really a nice effect. Next, check all the thresholds on your doors. Put your hand there. Do you feel cold air coming in? If you do, you need to replace that threshold piece with a rubber uh, stopper on there or get a piece of foam insulating foam weather stripping and glue it down under there and when you don't feel the cold air coming in, you'll have just saved some money. As well, check under the baseboards right on the edge over here because a lot of air infiltration comes right under here. A small bead of caulk can really stop that quickly. One of the other really big issues in losing energy in houses is the windows, of course. And the most common window in the United States is the aluminum double hung window. That's what these are. They're not new. And over time, they lose their efficiency. If I use our infrared thermometer to take a look with 35 degrees outside, we're looking at the window being 46. That's not great. That's not too bad. When we look at the frame itself, the aluminum frame, we're looking at 40 degrees. Well, it's conducting that ice cold air right into the house. I can feel cold air coming right off the window in here. First thing, of course, caulk, caulk, caulk. Cheap and easy. Go around the edges, inside and outside, a nice fine bead. Be sure that there is no air infiltration around the frame. But the other thing is that replacing these windows with vinyl or wood windows is a fantastic idea. Vinyl are excellent. I prefer those. Don't get them in the bronze because sunlight on the bronze color will absorb too much heat and crack the frame over time. That's my inside on that. Get the white. That's why white are pretty much traditionally used. But you can replace them fairly easily. There are two types. The original construction ones where it's made to be put under the outside of the house sheathing. But if you're replacing the windows, they have the replacement style windows and those are very easy to put in. You can of course hire a contractor to do them. They come out, they measure the windows, they replace them. But if you're a handyman, you can do them pretty darn easily yourself. Here's a little inside trick on that. You can take these panes of glass out of the window themselves with screws from the inside. The window panes will come out. Once you have those out, the aluminum frame is not very strong at all. You can take a couple of pairs of pliers or vice grips, attach it to the top of the frame, give it a good pull down with your whole body weight, and that frame will pull out of its mounting. Once you have the top collapsed, the sides move in, the bottom can be pulled out, and then the replacement windows just sit inside of the sill. At that point, three screws, four or five screws inside the frame, a bead of caulk inside and out, and if there is any gap with the uh, one by four or whatever you've got trimming it from the outside, then make small pieces of vinyl that fit into that too. But it's not that difficult. That's why a crew of two people can do 15 of these windows in one day. So good double hung, wide, thick vinyl windows really cut down on your energy losses. Well, 
You've seen these before. You probably may be even using some of them, but I bet you don't have all of your light bulbs replaced with high efficiency screw in compact fluorescent lights. Do it. These are a tremendous invention. The entire country of China converted over to these bulbs in mass because they didn't want to make 25% of their new power plants. That's the percentage that's used just to power the old Edison style light bulbs that produce 90% heat and 10% light. If you're running old style light bulbs just because they're cheap, you're producing 90% heat and then using your air conditioner and paying to pull that heat back out of your house? Complete lose-lose situation. $1.75 each. There are complaints, oh, people don't like the color of these, they don't think they come on right away. They have all of that fixed. They're great light, they come on right away, they don't vibrate, blink, or anything like that. They last over five years. Do it. You'll save a tremendous amount of money. Now you've probably all seen the Energy Star rating logo, and you can save a lot of money by getting appliances which display this logo, indicating that they use less energy. But there's still more that you need to know. The Energy Star rating just means that the appliance meets a basic minimum reduction in energy use when compared to others. And appliances with the Energy Star rating also vary in their efficiency and need to be compared with each other to determine which is actually the most economical unit. Compare the labels on the units and find the best value on the most efficient appliance which displays this Energy Star rating. Electrical outlets, a major source of air infiltration. Who knew? Take the cover off, take a little bit of uh, caulk and go around the whole inside of the edge of that electrical box up where it mates against the sheetrock and the wood. And they also make pre-cut out little foam inserts you can put under the cover if you don't want to use caulk. Now I've worked with the guys who do the energy audits of houses and I can tell you exactly what their hit parade is of energy loss in the house. Number one, of course, do your attic, then your window loss. The number three big one, losses in the air conditioning ducting system. And especially with floor mount ducts like this, where you can pull up the covers, what happens is just gravity and over time, the duct separates from its opening and lands up blowing air inside the house's recesses. As well, we're gonna deal with the air intake. So let's take a look at the inside of this one. Upon inspecting mine, I found that every one of my ducts had fallen out of its hole in the floor. What did I do? Physically pulled them back up into the hole with my hand and then ran a bead of latex caulk all the way around. You could use silicone too and seal the thing up and let it dry. The next thing we're going to look at is the air conditioning intake air handler over here with the air conditioning filter in it. This is the bigger one of my two. And what happens is that in back of the filter, if that box in back there is not sealed to the inside of the house, the system is pulling air from inside the rafters rather than pulling it from inside of your house where you want it to come from. So you need to seal that up. And the tools you use to do that is, of course, caulk. Also, this sort of aluminum tape with a very sticky glue on the back of it over here, sold at the air conditioning place. And also they have a sort of um, paint on gloppy glue that in the industry is known as pookie. It's a sort of mastic and you can just take a big paintbrush and paint that over the seams. Any combination of these will work. So let's take a look inside. First thing I want to show you is that a lot of these filters these days are not the exact size of the frame. So you don't want any air to bypass around there. I use a little piece of masking tape all the way around. Be sure that I don't have any air bypassing the filter. I'm going to use a flashlight to show you this. <laughs> look along these seams. I've added the tape to seal every one of these seams up in here. Some of them where that sheetrock was budding, I used a little bead of caulk in there. Very simple. But any seams you see, I had a big gaping hole down here. I used a piece of cardboard actually to cover it up and then went and go ahead and used the aluminum tape on it. Air's not gonna get through that cardboard, but I needed to seal up that hole so that we weren't sucking air from inside of the frame of the house. Now, unless you installed your own air conditioning system, you're not gonna know whether it was done absolutely perfectly. And the number one complaint, inadequate air intake volume. So here's my downstairs air intake. I just had one of these. What I did was go to the air conditioning supply house, buy another intake frame over here of the same size, $14, took a jigsaw, cut a hole out in the uh, ductwork here, and just inserted it, put two screws in, Bam, now I know I have adequate air intake for the system because if it's not breathing well, you're gonna have decreased performance for the entire lifespan of your air conditioning system.
Also, while I'm here, let me mention a programmable thermostat. They're about this big, white beige plastic. You've seen them in the home improvement centers. It changes the temperature at least four times a day, completely optimizes it. You can spend a little bit more and get one that has outside humidity and temperature sensors and knows how to really learn what the ideal conditions are to make you comfortable and save energy. Big thumbs up, programmable thermostat. Ah, oh, the next tip. You see what I don't have here? I do not have a blanket wrapping around my hot water heater. Well, that little old blanket down there, I'm going to wrap an actual blanket around mine, and, or you can buy fiberglass blanket wraps for your water heater. Now, these old-style water heaters are tremendously wasteful. These were made back when uh, energy was going to be free and it'd be too cheap to meter and all that stuff. It didn't happen. If you really, really want to make a difference, you've got to get a flash gas or electric hot water heater, and you probably can get the tax credit right off as well on this in the next few years. So look into flash heaters. Those are the ones that are efficient. Looks like I've got to put some more wood in the wood stove. I highly suggest a modern and efficient wood stove. Keep your house nice and toasty warm. Put a little teapot on top to keep some humidity in the air. But wood is a renewable resource. And in most areas in the U.S., there's plenty of it. Really good way to heat your house. What's another gizmo Bob likes? Power factor controllers. Now, these are commonly called watt misers, watt wizards, power savers, and go in line with AC motor-driven equipment to reduce the power consumption. That is, dehumidifiers, fans, cube refrigerators, freezers, anything that has an electric motor in it that runs off of AC current. Now, remember that sine wave current? When sine wave energy in the form of AC comes into your house and gets to a motor, it's not always at the right, what we call, phase angle, and the motor isn't exactly running completely optimally. What these things do, if made correctly, is to adjust the AC phase angle and current so that the motor is really operating optimally. It reduces heat in motors as well. So I like the small ones because, well, they're all over eBay. They're inexpensive. And you can run your small appliances and save a little bit of energy for as long as these things run. I've had one on my refrigerator for almost 20 years now. And it extends the life of the appliance. Now, if you see one that does your whole house for $100, something like that, it goes on the outside of the house, probably not going to work because it really takes a lot of intelligent circuitry to do the job right. So. Another item I like for saving money. Ah, the freezer. Move the freezer out to the garage for the winter time because it's colder out there. Who cares if it freezes? You want it freezing and you're going to save some money. Now, something I do is in the winter time, I put plastic garbage bags with the ties over my roof vents, you know, those rotating roof vents, to hold the warm air up in the attic. Here's my air conditioning system outside. There's the outside unit there. And what I did was, these little sheet metal boxes, these are rather large on mine, that contained the uh, tubes coming out for the air in and out of the house, I backfilled those with blown cellulose to insulate them. And then, for your maintenance a couple of times a year, go ahead and be sure first that your fins are nice and straight and clean. That means that branches and things are going to hit them during the course of the year. Go ahead and take a plastic butter knife and be sure they're all straight and not mashed over. Then open the, the unit up, this one you take the fan out of the top, and take a hose and blow out the fins from the back and rinse out all of the accumulated dirt and such so that you're sure it's getting a really good clean air exchange. Well, that wasn't so bad, was it? Now, if you're only going to do a subset of those, if you don't want to do all of that, do these things. Now, I've calculated that for an average house, it's going to cost less than $500. And I'd be shocked if you didn't see an over $100 energy savings the first month. Maybe a lot more depending on how much you're paying for natural gas, how leaky your house was to begin with, things like that. So do what you can and do this before you even put in your solar power system. Next, let's take a look at your car. Right. This car is a typical mid-size family sedan. It does have a four-cylinder engine, but the factory window spec on it was 26 miles per gallon in town. It does 34 and a half in town now. How? Simple physics, and I'll show you how. So how did we make this car get 30% more gas mileage? First, number one, bigger spark plug wires. The factory is going to send you wires that work, but not the optimum ones. You can go up to your auto parts store and find the really improved solid core wires and deliver an immense spark there. And they are not cheap, but they will last for the life of the car. So number one thing, improve the spark plug wires. Better spark. 
The next is our air filter. Here's the air filter box. You pop it open. You get a washable, replaceable, lifetime air filter. It has better airflow coming in. You can just wash it every once in a while. It is guaranteed to last 100,000 miles. It's a little bit of an outlay to begin with, but next thing you know, your car is breathing better. The next thing is synthetic oil in the transmission. If you have a manual transmission, put synthetic oil in. It's called 90 weight synthetic hypoi gear oil. Do it one time. It's about two quarts in an average engine. It'll last for 30, 40, 50,000 miles. I don't know about automatic transmissions, but in the manual transmissions, you'll see a 5% uh, gas mileage boost immediately. Ah, next tires, and you've heard this a million times, but tire pressure is tremendously important. You want to hear a really interesting spec? Um, all of the oil we'll ever find in Alaska and on the Gulf of Mexico is the amount that is wasted to underinflated tires in the United States every year. So what do you do? You check the spec, check the inside of the driver's side door for the tag, fill them up to that, and you can go a little bit over. Uh, and also they have a nitrogen fill now, which is pretty good. It doesn't really do much other than it doesn't leak out of the tire. So the chances of you being low on inflation uh, will be much, much lower if you put a little bit of a nitrogen air fill, a nitrogen gas fill in there, and you can have that done at the tire place. Also, there are LRR tires. That's low rolling resistance tires. If you look into that, it's really amazing because if you can save 10% on your gas mileage with low rolling resistance tires over the course of a 50,000 mile tire life, that's about four or $500 in gas savings, basically paying for your tires for free. The next thing is take everything out of the car that you don't need. Is there junk in the trunk, junk in the back seat, all kind of stuff that's just sitting in there? Get rid of it. I even took the spare and jack and everything out of my car because I have brand new tires. I have a tire inflator can in there and uh, I, I, I saved about 35, 40 pounds of weight in there. If I go out of town, I'll throw that spare back in there. And the other thing is just driving style. Jackrabbit starts, lead footedness, that costs you money. You have to go to work to pay for fuel that's being wasted. So when you're going out to plan your Saturday runarounds, make a list. Put it in the order that where they are on the map. So you're going in order. Call and see if they have it in stock. How many times you go up there and they just don't have it? Oh, they should have had it, but they don't have it. You're bouncing around wasting fuel. If you go out of town, take a GPS. Don't waste fuel. So make it a little bit of a game. It's called the make money for yourself game. See what kind of mileage you can get. And on the gas additives, you know, they've got gas additives. You've seen the engine additives. Who knows if they work or not? What you can do is test them. I found that one of them works for me. Do a gas log, see what miles per gallon you get when you go to the pump, do your division. And if one of them works for you, well, stick with it. So there you go, 30% increase in mileage. It's just physics.